So Tracy, start off. Tell me what brings you down to the show today. Um, I'm here to promote my new series on the Sci-Fi Channel called First Wave. It starts airing in January. And, I mean, do you know Howard? Do you... Uh... I'm a huge fan of his. I actually did a voice in his cartoon. I believe it was called Doomsday. Oh, really? About nine months ago. We never really got a chance to thank him for that. Oh, wow. So, so, so you've had some dealings with him? Yes, minimal. And what were they like? I never actually um, met him in person. He was... I, I did my portion of it in Los Angeles, and he was in New York. But uh, he's quite a character. I look forward to meeting him. Now, now what do you, tell me what you're expecting today. Nothing. You're not expecting anything no. from Howard or the show? No. Nervous about going in there? No. No? No. Not at all? What do you, uh, I mean... He's you... a charming, lovely man. I'm sure we'll have a really good chat. Do you, uh, do you have anything, you know, that you're, uh, you don't want to talk about? Is, it, is this no. going to be, like, a tough interview for you? No. No? A lot of no's going on. I mean, we'll see. If he wants to make it tough, I guess it will be. I'll have to beat him into submission. You think you could take him? <laughs> I don't know that anyone could take Howard. <laughs> you think, but but physically, you think you could take him? Oh, definitely. Definitely? You're tougher definitely. than that? Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's the ninja street fighting. <laughs> All right, cool. Well, good luck in there. Thank you so much. We'll see you in a couple minutes, then. Okay. All right, good luck. Uh, Tracy Lords has got an incredible background. Uh, what a story. I I've guess always yeah. wondered how she feels about her background. I know she never much liked me, but I guess she's willing to come in now. She's promoting something. She's got the uh, what do you sci-fi. What she didn't like you? She doesn't like. She said stuff about me in the yeah, past. Really? That pile up, pile said up. I wasn't a great guy, but that's all right. You don't have to think I'm great to come on the show. If you got an interesting story, I'm always happy to speak to Tracy Lords, <laughs> who has a new hair color. Yeah, it's, she's not blonde anymore. It's red. It's a red hair. Striking red hair. <laughs> I remember when Tracy Lords was on Melrose Place because I used to watch that show every week. At last we meet. At oh, last, my darling. You. So you, you know, don't I like me. I never got a chance. What are you talking about? Well, I here's never got a quote. Chance. Wait a second. Yeah. Hold on. Go ahead. I never got a chance to thank you for Doomsday. Oh yeah, right. Tracy uh, did a voice on uh, the Doomsday cartoon, which, by the so way, even though she didn't like you, you <laughs> gave her work. Uh, she didn't. It's not she that I don't like him. It's that I've been quoted as saying that you are the enemy of all women. But I'm not. <laughs> I said it. I as figured a joke. you were. I figured you were the enemy of all women. <laughs> but um, no. In all seriousness, I remember Melrose Place. You did that. Yeah. That was yeah. one of the big breaks. It was a big Actually, break. It was. It was about oh, about seven years yeah. ago now. And it was one of the highest rated uh, Melrose places. Actually, the four episodes you were in, you're only in four, right? No, um, I was actually in six. Oh, in six. So I was doing Roseanne at the same time, so I was moonlighting. I was going from Melrose Place to Roseanne. It was mm -hmm. really sort of chaotic time. It's pretty that hard to, to get a career started once you've done porn. Mm. And uh, you've been fighting that whole thing ever since. But getting back to me and you, here's what you said about me. Uh -oh. And I don't hold a grudge. I don't care. I, you know, I, I've often said, you don't have to like me to do the show. Right. But um, but you know I love you, right? I don't know that. Oh, come on, Howard. You love me a long time. <laughs> All right, here's what you said. This was in an interview a couple of years ago in Details Magazine. You were asked who you would rather sleep with, Rush oh. Limbaugh <laughs> Rush Limbaugh, or Howard Stern. Now, come on. And you said you would rather die. Now, <laughs> you know what? At least you're honest. You know what? Now, come on. As ugly as he is, I nobody, think I'm pretty ugly, too. Nobody know, wants it's, to die that much. Yeah. You don't. <laughs> to tell the truth, and though, you if you really... you seriously? Did you read that? Of course I do. That's, that's a guy... Uh, listen, I'm all sorry. we have is how women evaluate us. And first, I mean, Rush is just heinous. And by the way, that's not but an original thought, answer. Every I woman always, thinks that. I always <laughs> thought that yeah. it turned you on when women kind of gave you a hard time. No. That They're doesn't... No. I got enough hard time in my life with this face. I don't need more hard times. Uh, I didn't have any easy upbringing with this face. Oh, come on. No, I was not a sex object. You, on the other hand, when you were 10 years old, you already were fully developed. Yes, sir. And right. you've said that's the root of your problem, that you were Absolutely. confused sexually because you were a woman and but a child. And all these hormones were coursing well, through yeah, your 10-year-old body. It's right. really confusing when you're 10 and you walk down the street and you've got the 16, 17-year-old boys and, you know, that's men, 25-year-old right. men. Paying older, attention. Well, screaming at you and, you know, whooping it up and the cat calls and the whole thing. I but you had the classic bad childhood because you yes, had the father that abandoned you who never, you're still not in touch you with your father. You don't know him. 
No, actually about, oh, I don't know, two years ago, I, I thought that it was time for me to stop looking for my daddy. Right. So I, I went and um, wrote my father a letter and reconnected with him, and nothing had changed, really. He was still distant and not yeah, interested. Yeah. And it's never going to change. But you know what? That's okay now. Right. It's because um, Have you done well, therapy? I know what my dad is now. Right. It's not some, you know, big mystery to me. But when you're 10 years old, it's a mystery. Absolutely. Yeah, and even when you're 20 and years you old. you sort of blame yourself. Right. Absolutely. You do. It well, that, well that's yeah, classic. kid thinks, it's my fault daddy's not here. It must be something wrong with me. You're 10 years yeah. old. Your, 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 your body develops. Your dad's not around. Uh, it, it's classic, I guess, Freudian, where you say, well, I spent my life looking for my dad I, through men. The love you didn't Absolutely. get. Yeah. That's right. So it's pretty classic. It's easy to see why you, you would... You want that male attention. You want that validation, and you'll right. do anything to get it. Is it it's still important to you, you think, to have male... I don't know who your boyfriend is now. Do you have a boyfriend? I don't have a boyfriend. Yeah, you, you've dated some famous dudes and stuff. <laughs> she has. She's she's dated some famous guys. <laughs> Not like really, no. I'll give you your resume. Yeah. Oh, come on. And then I want to get back to the Rush Limbaugh thing, because i got to admit... If I had a dollar for every guy that said he dated me... All right, I'll tell All you right, who I have. All right, let's see. Let's, let's find out if any of these guys really did. All right. Here's okay. Okay, we can play that. All right, let's see. Howard okay. Stern. Well, I know you went no. out with the actor. No, <laughs> me, you never went out with. I know the actor John Enos. You went out with. Yeah. That was that was like a real boyfriend. Yeah, it was the time of the great sickness. No I'm kidding. <laughs> You're not into him anymore. Was that another Say case that. of you trying to find your father through a no, man? You know, John, who is John Enos? He's an actor. Uh, what has he been in? I've met him a few times actually. Uh, I think he was going out with Heidi Flies for a while. Because I met him at some party and Heidi Fleiss was there. But I don't even know if that's true. I'm try I know the name, but I can't put a face to it. He's a big, muscular dude. He's a really, really charming, um, sexy, um, demented in a way, individual. <laughs> and yeah, we had a good time together. A couple of years. I have nothing bad to say about John. It just, it was what it was. It ran its course and I was finished. You broke up over his dog killing your cat? Yeah, that'll do it. I do remember that that'll story. That'll do it. Yeah. But it was, why? Because why? he was not sympathetic? That. I broke up because he was just, well, that was, you know, He took a major the dog thing. side. He was irresponsible <laughs> when he was a kid and I got tired of dating a little boy. Right. You wanted a man, someone That's who right. you felt could perhaps give you the the security you've never had. Well, Emotional that, security. Well, I wanted somebody that was present and that, you know, was a grown-up, and he wasn't. Right. So you realized that maybe you were just more physically attracted to him than you were in terms of emotional needs. Well, you know, he was a really lovely accessory. He was. So it's, is, is it... <laughs> right. He looked good. Yeah, he looked and good. And he probably was a good lover. He looks like a I good lover. I well, I wouldn't say that. Oh. In fact, it says here, the two of you, the Tracy. two of you, the two of you were so in love at one point. That you were once heard having sex in the bathroom of a small L.A. restaurant. No, True or false? It sounds good. It sounds like you might do that. No, I wouldn't. You wouldn't? You would Absolutely not? Do people not. think you're loose sexually because you did some porno? Absolutely. And you have you fought against that? In other words, like when a guy goes out with you, does he right away think, oh, no, you're going to be wild in the sack? It would be really stupid for me to fight against that. I'll tell you why. why? I never have to do another bad thing in my life because right. everyone just thinks I am. Yeah, but there's nothing wrong well, with you being a sense. sexual... There's nothing wrong with you being a sexual woman now. Just because you did porno and you, you fought against that and you went and made a career for yourself, there's still nothing wrong with you having sex in the bathroom with your boyfriend. But forget the dating part. What about... I mean, did they have the the pull-out couch already out when you'd go to get a job at some of these places? No, you know, the one thing that I have honestly never, knock on wood, had a problem with is the casting couch in Hollywood. Because right. I think, fortunately for me, men fear me. Right. Which is, you know, can work to your advantage. I believe that. I think that they're afraid I'll break it or something. No, but, 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 but to me, I would think, I would think that, now hear me out on this. Let's say I was going out with you and we're having sex. And I said, you know what? I really love her. She's great. But I want to tell her how much I want her. I want to tell her, you know, how sexy she is. I want to tell her, uh, you know, I want to uh, F you in the bathroom and all that kind of stuff. Then you're, go verbal? then you're going to be thinking, oh, he thinks I'm a porno star. So he's saying all this stuff. But that's something I would say to any girl I was into. I would talk dirty to any girl that I'm into. Yeah, so with I mean, you, it's a whole you mind game. Get to know her. No, but there's <laughs> something you have to know. I'm I'm a very you know sexual person. Yeah. But the difference is that I'm a grown woman now. I'm right. not a little kid. I don't have any hangups about sex. But if I, I said quite to frankly, you, frankly, love sex. Right. I just don't do it with everyone anymore. Right. But if I said it to you, 
you know, if I started talking dirty, you, you'd say, think it was I was doing it because you're no, Tracy Lords. Absolutely not. I mean, it would depend on the person. Yeah. I think I'm a really good person about just being able to tell when something's BS and when something's right. real. Okay. But so I mean, would, also, it would you'd, depend on the if delivery. a person d- meets you and says, you know, I want to fuck. You. Oh, I mean, oh. that's oh. <laughs> <laughs> the way you are, baby. <laughs> she said I, the F word. You just said the F word. <laughs> I mean, you better you better get to your vibrating chair. Uh, and if somebody says I want to make love to you in the bathroom when they just oh. meet you. Now you know it's just about your reputation. That's about right. You. That's right. Now, you know, um, I mean, it's interesting because, especially now with my hair red, a lot of times people don't even know who I am. Really? I mean, I'm doing this series called First Wave in Vancouver right now. Right. You're going to be on the Sci-Fi Network. That's right. And this is a Francis Ford Coppola production? Yeah. And when I went and auditioned for this show back in February, the creator of our show, Chris Broncato, had no idea but who you, I was, right. what I was. I mean, when he looked at the sheet after it auditioned, he said, oh my God, this is Tracy Lords." But I mean, out of like, you know, the dozen of girls that he'd seen that day, he didn't know which one was Tracy Lords. Didn't you think that after you got out of the whole porno thing that maybe you should have changed your name from Tracy Lords? I tried Lourdes? to. And I what did. happened? It wouldn't work? Well, I was modeling. I, I was working in um, in Los Angeles, and I was doing you know legitimate modeling. Right. And I'd gotten a commercial for a Japanese com- company, and then they threatened to sue me and my agency because they said, you know, um, false representation, there was a morality issue, blah, 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 blah. So it was one of those things of damned if you do, damned if you don't. Did you so ever want the stance of, okay, here I am. You either like me and or you don't. You want to use me or you don't. Did it ever get so bad that you wanted to kill yourself? Absolutely. It did, right? Because I would think that, hey, you're saying, Jesus, I might have been able to be a legitimate model. I might have been able to be a legitimate actress. I was a kid. I made a mistake. And now they won't let me forget. Absolutely. And, and then you and say, there's no way out. Me forget. You still haven't let you forget. Oh, no. Even it'll though you've be, done some legitimate stuff. I'm convinced it'll be like... Um, carved on my gravestone. Why not embrace it then? <laughs> well, I don't know that I'm at a place where I can just say, isn't this wonderful? Um, because it wasn't all wonderful, but I am in a place where I can say, this is what I did, and I think that shame is the most toxic thing any person could have. You're right. And because I'm not ashamed th- of that. You're right, because as a matter of fact, it's like you do one thing in your life, and that's Especially the fun. Especially when you're a kid. And you're a kid. Yeah. You're like 16, and all of a sudden... It's like, oh my God, every guy who ever looks at me is going to see me as a porno star, even though I'm not one. I was a child. Yeah. And it's always going to be that way. Everyone's going to have in the back of their mind, I'm Tracy Lords, the porno star. Can a nice man love me because he's going to be thinking he can't take me home to his mother? You know what I mean? It's got to be there. The stigma. Yeah, it's absolutely... you know, it'll, it would drive you crazy. It would drive me crazy if I really kind of, like, left it there. When you I walk into a room, do you feel that? Do you feel that people are going, oh, man, they're all saying I'm Tracy Lords, a porno star, and I'm not a porno star. That's not no. who I am. I mean, I try not to read things into what people think of me. Right. We all have our, you know, we want to be liked. We care what people think. But at some level, it's like people are going to want to see me, want to meet me, and like me for, you know, a variety of reasons. Right. Some people know me because of my music career. Some people will know me because of sci-fi um the network first wave but most people, people will know, know you because, because of, of porn porn even though it was a decade ago it right. was half my life ago now and people they love a topic they love a label right and if i get to do nothing else the one thing that i would love to do is make a new label for myself yeah, because i got to admit even like me sitting here i was saying oh yeah tracy lords is coming in like, right away, that means, oh, man, she's going to be loose. Oh, right right away, that means, oh, man, she was a porno star. She must be disturbed because she became a porno star at such a young age. But that's not fair, is it? It's not fair, but it's also not only that mm. aspect. It's like, oh, well, geez, that's such a, a, you know, everybody's fascinated because porn stars are usually porn stars when you meet them. Right. You're an ex. And, you know, everybody thinks, wow, but she did that. You know, wow. I mean, I wonder... What's going on with her? You know, it's it's sort of like a mystery. Really you're difficult. a mystery. Really yeah. Yeah. You've got to prove to people you're not disturbed. Well, I think I was disturbed at the time, Howard. Right. Um, yeah, absolutely. You know? And we don't think anybody can be cured, right? Right. <laughs> Actually, you being normal now is fascinating. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> am I normal? Thing. Yeah, you're pretty normal. I would think okay. you're normal. I think you're a very pleasant person, but you want, nice do, person. Do you get yeah. uh, invitations to, like, the White House or can political no. so, yeah. people not be seen with you? What is going on? You cannot win. Yeah, that's right. You could not go to the White House. Like, I couldn't go to the White House. Well, I'm afraid of the scandal it might cause. You're yeah, right. It's true. The president might really <laughs> right, come yeah. on to you. <laughs> then what would I do? All right. So you Legal also, I was all. talking about d- guys you dated. You dated Rob Camaletti, Cher's old no, boyfriend. No, I did not. No? No. 
It says here, dated Rob he Camelletti. on me once. The bagel guy who used to no. date Cher. See, that's a date. When he he waited, waited on, on me. You. Right. <laughs> no. And let's see. Uh, he was in a film I was in uh, with Crystal Bernard, a movie of the week about, I don't know, five or six years ago. So maybe you haven't. Uh, aside from Joe Lieberman, the vice president, uh, oh, presidential know? candidate. There is a, no, I know. I don't know. <laughs> All right. So anyway, the, the, the point I'm making is, is that let's get back to the Rush Limbaugh comment. I want to know this. When <laughs> asked really whether or bad. not, well, wait a second. I have to clear this up. <laughs> okay. And, and you don't have to lie and tell me you would still make love to me over Rush Limbaugh. But the fact of the matter is, you said I would rather die than have sex with either one. Either of them. one. Either one. Now, I'm not saying I'm a good-looking man. Sometimes I, I'm a drama queen. I'm uh, an actress. Right, that's true. <laughs> but you have to admit, on some level, I'm better looking than Rush Limbaugh. Absolutely. At least I look a little younger. More desirable. A little more desirable than him. And you know, Howard, I really believe you'd probably be a blast in bed. Yes. Because you've just got such a mouth on you. <laughs> exactly. I have a lot to say. I could certainly talk you into something. <laughs> something weird. And I've always said, if you can get in my head, you can get in my pants. Really? Oh, yeah. Well, honey, I'm, I'm ready. Let's go. <laughs> Let's do it right now. Right on, the, right on the couch. All right. So, okay. So your father leaves you at a young age. You develop at 10 Where's years old. Where's your mother? Your mother's like in the ozone, isn't that correct? Well, it wasn't that my mother was not there, but she wasn't physically there. She was, you know, she, I've got three sisters, so mm -hmm. she had four small kids and, you know, was working and going to school to get mm -hmm. her degree. Mm -hmm. So she was just never there. It was right. always like the older sister taking care of the rest of us. Yes, and I still say most people are not equipped to have kids. Here she is, 10 years old. She has a beautiful body. And she looks great. nobody's dealing with this. Nobody's explaining to her that you're becoming a sexual being. And also, you uh, have a tragedy. You get raped at 10 years old. Yeah, that's, yeah. Right. So that's got to blow your mind. And was your mom there for you on that occasion? No, I, I didn't tell anyone. Oh. Because you were afraid you were the guilty one, well, I bet. Yeah, I did. Well, for, that's the tragic for, case. You know, that, that changed my life completely. Wow. Because you don't think anybody cares. Well, I thought that, you know, that's what sex was. It was violence. So it makes perfect sense that I would become a porn star at 15. And in some odd way, you're starting to get attention from men, and that's the the, the father you never yeah, had. Yeah, this is what men want. And who is this guy? Is, is, he, is he someone that uh, to this day you know where he is and, and uh, know what he did to you? No, but, you know, uh, my driver told me that he would hunt him down and put him in the trunk. Really? <laughs> when did he tell you that? Today? Yeah. Really? <laughs> so I'm thinking. How did he know hmm. about this? Is this something? Everybody that's... knows everything. It's, oh, they do. It's frightening. <laughs> really? You know. Well, you knowing the comment about you know you know Rush Limbaugh. Yeah. Well, I, of course yeah, that would right. get back to me. But but let me let me understand something. <laughs> so when something like this happened, is it a neighbor or a friend of the family or, or a, a cousin? Was, no, he was a boy that was probably two grades ahead of me. Oh. Right. And he and, forced you to do this. Yeah. And and you couldn't tell anyone. And in some odd way, you thought it was your fault because you're so developed. Yeah, completely. Wow. And you've never gone after him? No. Never confronted him? No. Ugh. Don't have any desire to? Um, I think I've, I've had the fantasy in my head of what I would say. And but you don't need to. say it, but I don't really need to at this point, no. Do you, did you ever get curious and find out if he's like a married man now yeah. with yeah, children with of his own? Or whatever, no. yeah. Oh, I'd would, love to know that. It would take that. too much energy, and I quite frankly don't really care about him anymore. That's good. You know, so it's it's something that. So you I think it's really behind you? Oh yeah. Have you gone to a psychotherapy? Oh yeah, I think everyone should be assigned a therapist at birth. Right, and you've gotten yeah. it, like it had to be a major Especially issue. Especially actors. Yeah. <laughs> we we need lots of them, fleets of therapists. <laughs> but wasn't it a major issue for you your whole life, and did yes. and, and that somehow you let go of it through therapy? Um, I wouldn't say just through therapy. Obviously, I acted out a lot. Right. So yeah. you went through the gamut. I mean, you oh, freaked yeah. out. Besides the porn. It was sex, drugs, and rock and roll. And I hate myself, and I'm going to kill myself, and who cares? And what kind of drugs were you doing? Oh, everything. And you would do any guy you met, or were you, like, somewhat discriminating? Um, I don't, I don't really know. There were just too many men. There were. I've had my share of men. All right. Yes. Too many yeah, men. And was it enjoyable at the time or not even enjoyable? Well, you know what? I like sex, but how conscious I was at that period of my life, uh, not very. Right. And having sex with somebody who you barely know, is that satisfying in some way? Do um, I think that's ridiculous. You now. think it's ridiculous oh, now? Yeah. Now. But yeah. then you didn't. No, I guess but I But it wasn't even right. like sex. I mean, if she's inebriated and traumatized and all of those other things she's just there right you know yes. she's just being you what were you doing were you doing coke or heroin or what no I, I was never really into heroin thank god right but i was really into coke coke oh yeah i never got into That's that the worst one i don't know why anyone likes cocaine i don't either i've tried it i don't 
talk total BS and chew your mouth out, and right. it's just horrible. Yeah, drug. I was gonna say, is your nose all right? So yeah, why do you right. think you got into it? <laughs> do you think it, 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 you must have liked it at the um, time? Validation. Right. I think that I wanted to be accepted In. anywhere, and even if it was something, I didn't know anything about porn. At right. 14, 15 years old, I still thought that it was, I mean, you're talking about the 80s, too. Right. It's not what it is now. Now, I mean, porn stars have billboards on Sunset Boulevard. It's bizarre. Yeah. Right. When I was doing it, it was really kind of like underground you know, the back alley thing. Yeah. Right. They did those things in the valley in, in California and in Sherman Oaks or something. Right. I mean, it wasn't. But you, when mass... you got to Hollywood, though, were you going there to become a model or an actress? Absolutely. And then somebody duped you into Absolutely. it? Absolutely. Oh, so were you like a yeah. runaway? Mm. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, wow. got off the it bus. Just and the, the, it's the story that you've heard so many times, and it's absolutely true. And with all the videotapes you sold, you claim you only made about fifty thousand dollars in porn anyway. The girls never made money in that. I don't know if they do now, but think I about the billion. Didn't. It's a it's a four billion dollar a year industry. Yeah, somebody made some That's money. That's what I hear. And, and and none of the women ever make the money. It's weird. It is weird. Although some of the women now are making money doing personal appearances. Yeah, but some of those guys we see, they don't look like they have any money either. What is it, Gary? I actually have a question because, you know, I think the story's pretty fascinating. What, when you got to L.A. and some guy recruited you, what was the actual move? Like, did you literally get off the bus and the guy says, hey, you need a place no, to stay? No, what happened was I had run away from home. I was in, I, I was, I'm from Ohio, but I'd already gone to um, Redondo Beach with my mom and my sisters. And I had run away from Redondo Beach. And I went to Hollywood and it was this stupid story of going and sitting on Marilyn Monroe's star and saying, I want to be loved like her. Mm. It was like, that oh, was the were. person. Yeah, yeah. yeah, right, exactly. You actually were loved <laughs> like her. That was, my, that was my thing. That was right. what, you know, was in my mind. And so I was looking through the want ads in the L.A. Times, mm. and I came across an ad for Models Wanted. No portfolio, no experience necessary. Right. And I called it thinking I'd hit the jackpot, and this guy said, sure, hmm. I'll help you out. I'll make you a star. Right. You know, I just kind of need to see what your body looks like in a bathing suit. Right. I need to see this. And then it was like, have you ever had champagne before? Oh. Have you ever taken a ride in a limo? Oh. And I was... Are you living with the guy after like a week? Oh, yeah. 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 And then he's saying to you, hey, why don't you have sex on camera? Well, that they, that didn't really happen. It wasn't really set up that way. I mean, I was doing I wonder how they modeling. do it. Um, I was just really, really intoxicated. Right. And there was a camera involved, and there was sex involved, and I became, like, literally, it was... So you didn't think you were acting in movies at all? No, not at first I didn't. And then when you, oh. and then when you saw yourself in the movie, were you I shocked? I never saw myself in the movie. You never did. And no. did, But you knew they were releasing them. Oh, well, yeah. Yeah, I knew. Wow. Did you ever get to the point where, like, you'd been there for a while, and all of a sudden you saw... Six months later, you, you know, the new girl come in, and all of a sudden she's getting courted, and you're, like, being pushed to the side? No. no. Oh, she was hot now, stuff. did you lie about your age, or did they put you into, uh, tell you to lie about your age? Oh, I've been lying about my age since I was 10. Okay. You Me know, too. I, I always. No, just kidding. I always do. <laughs> Me too. Right. <laughs> so, you, but, but the guys who did this to you, because you were a kid, did mm -hmm. they ever go to jail? Did they ever, did the cops ever get involved? Um... The cops did get involved when I was about 18 years old, right. and the thing that always really, quite frankly, pissed me off about the whole thing was yeah. that they had this attitude of, we're saving you from pornography, but yet my mother had reported me as a runaway mm. three years previous, and they had a file on me that was about an inch thick, and no one ever did a thing about it. Think the, somebody was paid thing, off? Well, I, what I think is that it was a political year, the Mies Commission was going on, right. and I think that a lot of people needed a platform. This happens all the time with politicians I'm sorry to say there are good politicians and there are quite frankly ones that are really slimy right and you know it's like election comes up and everyone wants to suddenly police the internet and everyone wants to suddenly so that's why you were internet. saved in a sense over politics yes and you know what you were a good they poster me, child they did me a service I'm glad that they did what they did I only wish they had done it sooner but well, maybe they, uh, there's two you could also make the case they could have done it quietly as opposed to making it a big sensational thing, and then yeah. your life would have been spared. You yeah. became the target. The guys who did this to you, we don't know their name. We only know your name. Right. Yeah. I'm not, I want to make it really clear. I'm not knocking the FBI. I'm not knocking, you know, uh, enforcement. I think that they have a really tough job. It's really difficult. To police the world. this kind of crap. Right. Yeah, policing the world. I'm just talking about my individual experience. You think it, it still goes on today? I was impressed with. Do you think there's still underage uh, people in uh, porn? I would hope not. Yeah. 
I would think that uh, maybe you know, they the aren't scandal, in Howard, but they're somewhere. I would think that the scandal that you know that was created by my being underage and porn scared everyone. really did scare everyone. Yeah. And so if nothing good came out of that, that would be the one thing that you know I'm happy about that. Did they ever do like a TV movie the week of your story? No, I, I was. I'm shocked. Interested? Well, I had several offers for that. I'm kind of shocked. I always felt like people know enough. Well, about you got to get her permission, huh? Yeah. No, not necessarily. They do the Jerry, Joey Buttafuoco story from without anybody's permission. Well. I'm just shocked. I'm shocked that actually you haven't done a movie about it. I think it would be an I interesting think, movie. I think she doing will at movies a certain about point. other things, you know. Did, did you ever write a which, book? First wave. Yeah, okay, I'll get to that in a second. Did you ever did you ever write a book or anything? No. Never had any desire. Um I've actually thought about it. No, I'd but read I that. don't have the ending yet. You don't need an ending, believe me. You got you got an ending. In the you have an ending to <laughs> you have an ending to some of the most interesting stuff in your life and it is yeah, interesting and you fascinating can stop to people. In the middle. Because it's all interesting. It's just an interesting life. Yeah, it is at that. Yeah. It is. So it's, it's, what's okay. your life like now, before I get to uh, the, the, the uh, sci-fi channel and the new uh, TV show, First Wave? My life is incredible. I mean, I've been... Where do you live now, L.A.? No, I'm in Vancouver, Canada. You live there? Yeah, I've been there for five months doing the show. Oh, but you just moved there for the show. Yeah, I did. Right. Yeah, but I was living in Los Angeles, in Hancock Park, actually. Yeah. And um, Did you sell everything in Los Angeles? Or no. You're not, I mean, you still have your home there. I have my apartment there, and I have my, my two cats. Right. My two Siamese kitties are there, and right. all grown up now, which is kind of strange. Now, who do you party with? Do you have friends? Do you have uh, showbiz I friends? I, I'm I'm not really much of a partier these days. You're not in. You don't have any show business friends, famous friends. No. Really? No. Who do you hang around with? Really normal people. You know, my best friend in the world, you know, owns a restaurant in Los Angeles. Right. And, um, well, who's that? It's great. What, what, what restaurant is that? Give Muse. A, Muse. Muse Restaurant in Los Angeles on Beverly Boulevard. Is he married to like a famous model or something? Um, no, no. he's not. Hmm. And you. Is he your boyfriend? No, no, no. no. He's he's definitely not my boyfriend. So you have friends who love you. Yes, absolutely. And and the attempt to contact your father was a failure. You you met him and everything, but it just was a drag. Actually, I have never physically, you know. You just met wrote him. him a letter. I mean, I knew my dad until I was, you know. What's he doing now? Does he have another family or I something? Don't know. He you don't care. Answer any of these questions. What did you write to him? You say, hey, listen, I want to know hey, about you. What's the deal? Right. Why did you leave me? Yeah. And what did, did you he talk say? Talk to him on the phone. He said, I didn't leave you. You left me. How did you leave him? Well, because my mother took us and moved to another state. Oh, oh that was your fault. So he's he's right about that. Yeah, it was my fault. Oh, I see. So he didn't want to track <laughs> yeah, you down. Yeah, he can't contact no. you in another state. Yeah, I guess he didn't mm. believe in you know planes or <laughs> trains. <laughs> and or yeah, right. There was no way to contact you. <laughs> yeah. And uh, your mom is still alive. Yes, she is. And you and you and you hang out with her. Or my you don't mom have is great. You still have stuff to do with her. Yeah. You, yeah. You're okay it with took, her. It took years. And what about your sisters? Are you, are you my friendly with them? Sisters are great. They're, they're supportive of you. Yeah, I've got three of them, and they're really intelligent, really successful, really driven women. They're so different, all of them. One's a lawyer. One has an import business. One's a fashion model. I mean, they're all really great ladies. Wow. Oh, that's nice. And and the thing is that acting uh, has gone well for you now. You've gotten into a legitimate thing, even though it's difficult because of uh, your background. And uh, first wave is Francis Ford Coppola. They didn't know it was Tracy it's Lords they were hiring. They just you just went in and just auditioned. Oh well, they knew, but they didn't. I mean, they had the, the list of the names when right. you go in, but it was like. You know, pick me out of the crowd, right? Amongst the girls, but I mean, it's Larry Sugar and Chris Brancato and Francis Ford Coppola, and it's filmed in Vancouver, and it's a one-hour drama. It's a sexy sci-fi show. Now, check this out. It's it's, creator, it's weekly. Yeah, no, yeah, but the creator, Chris Brancato, I understand you're a fan of because he did Species Two. Yeah, that's a good movie. So I like that. He's really, it's got that edge of that sexy sci-fi. And what about uh, when a guy, when like when these guys say to you, "Hey, we need you in a hot outfit. We need you in a bikini. We need you in this." Do you get offended you don't by that? Go, oh. No, in this in this show, it's I mean, this is about you know a man that believes that aliens have come to the Earth to take over, and he wants to stop the invasion. I believe that anyway. Yeah, and so right. my <laughs> so my character, I'm actually I use my family fortune. I've lost my parents. I've lost everyone I've ever loved. This alien invasion. I use my family fortune to start an underground you know militia, and so I'm like this sexy sort of. Yeah, I want to see you in hot lady. outfits. Yeah, and, and are you going to be in hot outfits? Absolutely. You are. I am in. Look, what outfits. do you wear? Like, like little bra tops. Like little you know sexy. T- Tops and tight leather pants. Oh, that's and good. Skin and that's right. Stiletto heels sometimes, and I wield an Uzi. Because you got a hot body. Yeah. I mean, we all know that. World domination. Yeah. You have to dress for. It. That's right. I fight <laughs> world domination, but it's DKNY militia the whole way. All right, let's uh, like let's uh, let's go to a couple of phone calls. All right, for Tracy Lords, real quick. Uh, First wave is the name of the show. Go ahead. Hey, how you doing? Yo. Listen, Tracy, you're just fantastic. Oh, man. thank you. I, I really like. Uh, what you're saying. Um, mm. I loved you in Blade. 
Oh, thank you. <laughs> Listen, that was the start oh, of good. the red hair. Voice. Uh, my darling, I love you. <laughs> I something really Bob like Guccione or something. Howard, it's early in the morning. And that's a story I remember about you. you. You actually did Penthouse when you were underage, and they had to go around from newsstand to newsstand and rip the pages out of the magazine. Isn't that true? I don't know. I is remember it? hearing that. Maybe well, Gary told us. Sir, are you undressed while you're talking to Tracy Lawrence? No, I'm not. But you I'm sound like you're nude. Get in bed in just a second as I work nights. Yes. Listen, Tracy, if you, being in L.A., is it possible that you would run across some of these people that took advantage of you in your youth, and would you confront them if you came across them? I think I would probably run the other way. I mean, it would depend. If somebody walked up to me and confronted me, then I would certainly hold my own and speak my mind. But I can't see why I would want to. You know, that world is like a completely a different one from the one I'm in right now, and I like it that way. All right, let's go to uh, David. Go ahead. Tracy Lords is the most beautiful girl on the face of the earth. Thank you. Sounds like you want to have sex with her. Um, I'm, I am right now. Tracy, can we? Oh, God. <laughs> Tracy, just one piece of advice for your career. Stay away from that fat bastard stuttering John because he'll get drunk and spill beer on you and touch you with his, <laughs> with his belly. Thank well, you got to, yeah, it happened to that guy from. Uh, <laughs> Must be Jacob, Jacob Dylan. Dylan. Yeah, it happened to Jacob Dylan. <laughs> Jacob yeah. Dylan. Yeah. yeah. He's been calling my mother a whore on the phone all morning, but it ain't no big deal. All right, don't worry about it. Hey, well, Jacob Dylan or John? All right, let's go to uh, Shane. Shane, go ahead. Here. How you doing? All right. Michelle, buddy. Love Thanks, man. Thank you. Um, I, just, I was going to call and say a whore is a whore, nothing but a whore, but after hearing her story, I think I could have been a whore, too. Yeah, see? Change your mind. It can happen, yeah, man. Wow. It can happen to a young girl. It can, you, know, you know, you come from the wrong side of the tracks. You, your parents split up. They don't pay any attention no to you. No guidance and nobody to talk and to. And it happens. It confusing happens. Confusing things happening. Thing is, why should she pay the rest of her life or something like that? That's It's like right. she got on her permanent record. That's right. All right, let's <laughs> go to Harry. Harry, go ahead. Hey, Howard. How are you? What's up? Uh, Tracy, uh, listen, uh, you know, if you watch that E! Uh, special about you, almost yes. everybody in the yes. uh, adult uh, industry thinks you're the one that kind of turned secretly yourself in so you could profit off the only legal film made of you, which you happen to own the rights to. Yeah, I, I've seen that. What is the rumor, that you called the FBI anonymously and yeah. then... Uh, well, well, how would she... That she would be the most brilliant marketing person on the planet yeah. had she done that. And by the way, if she did do that... Admirable. Uh, so that's what? admirable. It's, uh, she was being used and she was underage. Why not call I, the FBI? I didn't do that, just for the record. Mm -hmm. um, okay. People will believe what they want to, but I didn't do that. I certainly wouldn't have been in my underwear with drugs in my apartment and had the FBI I come on in. You know? but it's typical. It was not good timing. It well, Howard, it's typical it to blame the talk. victim in a lot of situations because I did see. Well, Tracy misled us. Yeah, go ahead. What, what are you <laughs> yeah. saying? She, there's only one legal film of her. I think Tracy, yes. I love you. It's called, and she she does own the rights to that, and that's like one of the biggest. You know, selling. Did you have to go to court over that one too? I did, and I won six yeah. months ago. They didn't pay you, right? Actually, no. They, they, I just won the rights back to that film. And uh, the masters of it are actually going to be turned over just in the next couple of months. This has been a lawsuit that I've had going on for years that finally went to court. Let me set it up. You so, in other words, read about this, when right? you, I, I think I know about this. When you became of age, when and you I were 18, 18 years this old. This was the only legal one, and I've wanted it off the market ever since. Oh, so, I so you that. said, look, this was done against my will in a way? And, and what was the basis for the I lawsuit? I couldn't say anything. No, I had, you know, they owned it legally. Right. But they only had it for a certain amount of time, and the rights were supposed to revert back to me. That was your contract. And that's right. right. And I signed it when I was 18, and it was a huge mistake. Right. Huge. And it was the only one left. So, and when the rights were up, which was about five years ago, I couldn't get it back. They wouldn't turn it over. So you I went to court. To take it and burn it. What's it cost to go to court after it all those cost years? It me a small fortune to get this thing off the market. Million dollars? No, I wouldn't say that much, but close. Wow. And so. and your legal rights were basically, hey, I own the master to this. Stop distributing That's the right. film. That's right. And you won. Yes, I did. And now you have Finally. the masters. Yes. You have I them. I don't physically have them yet. They're supposed to be turned over within like 60 days or something. Right. This just... You know, went to court like six months ago. And what will you do with the masters? Will you burn them? Absolutely. That will be the end of it. You won't it, save it just for I'm like to, to look at it someday. No, I'm not foolish enough to think that that will be the end of that film because there will always be bootleg ones. Right. There will always be the internet. It's right. not about that. It's about the fact that I want people to know that I don't want that film out. Right. It's not that I'm some big anti-porn person. Right. I think that what you, adults you do is up to them. But for me, I, yeah, I would rather not have people be able to go in a video store and rent me having sex. Plus you also have the right to own that film. That's right. Right, and they wouldn't just give it to you. That's right. right. So one other thing, Howard, is I know she used to like live with Tom Byron. Did Tom go to jail? For Who's that? That's not true. Who's Tom Byron? 
by the way. Who is that? He's a porn star, and oh. no, I didn't live with him. Oh, I, That's I, a myth. It, it, what is your Benjamin? made it appear like that on the show. I, I was curious, like, if Tracy, you said you always lied about your age and everything. Like, why, are the, why were these guys scummy to do a business with you when they thought you were of age? I think that, you know, people believe what they want to believe. And I think it was, it very much had a feel of, you know, well, we asked her and she said. Well, I t- I'll tell you what's scummy. If, if the story is true, what Tracy's telling, she went and had a couple of drinks with some guys, got loaded, they videotaped her and then released it. Yeah, she you was dig? Uh, in the uh, yeah, that, that's asked. scummy. That's uh, that, about uh, as scummy as you get. Right, definitely. But well, I, I would think. But, but e past Howard that, I mean, I'm sorry, what? ID. What? She also showed on E, like her exact yes, fake I did. license. Yes, I did. Absolutely. She, of exactly. course she had fake ID. Right, yeah, she was they, a runaway. Some of these people probably really did think she was over. Oh, I don't think they, I, I think probably they did think she was oh, over yeah. age. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I think they thought she was the right age. I just think that the scummy part of it. Oh, was yeah, getting her high on drugs people. and then oh, filming definitely. her. Yeah. Those that, initial people were the scummy. That doesn't sound right to me, man. Right, but it went on a couple years past that. And not that there's anything wrong Absolutely. with it, but... Yeah, but it she went says, on for but about two and a half years. It went on for quite a while. Right. It was, you know, a period of my life that was really intense, and it was sex, drugs, and rock and roll. And, and you probably had to say to yourself, well, how the hell am I ever going to get uh, a career this. going? I can't get out of it, so I might as well embrace it for well, a while. It's like, you know, I've seen a lot of women do this. Once you get into something like that, it's really hard to get out. Yeah. Tracy, how did the Melrose women treat you? Were they, like, mean to you? No, they were the best. Heather Locklear is my favorite. Let me I tell you something about Heather Locklear. I've hung out with her a few times. She's the nicest human being. She, really she is sweet. Is. She is sweet. I mean, she's nice to everybody. Were she's not like coming a, on to you there? With were, a, excuse me? Were the men were coming, coming out coming to, you? to you? No, no. Do you ever go on movie sets where people are mean to you? Seriously, just because oh, you are or, Tracy or Lord? Snub you? Or be, are no. there like, legitimate actresses no. who find that you're, uh, oh, you're not good enough for them? No, I've been really blessed to work with really great people. Hmm. I mean, that's what I want to continue to do. Keep doing really good projects and working with really great people. Most people, I mean, know that uh, um, it's taken a lot of hard work to get where I am. And hmm. they, they're they smart they enough them. to realize that, hey, maybe we should give her a chance. So I've been really fortunate. It that way. Let's go. One last call. Dave, go ahead. And, hey, uh, Tracy. good morning, Pinocchio. Oh, yeah. Hey, that's Tracy. so mean. You hey, think you've had a tough life. You think you've had a tough life. Look at my nose. <laughs> what is it? And by the way, I beat this guy in a beauty pageant, okay? Oh, please. That contest <laughs> was one, fixed. Yeah, fixed. Uh, Tracy, I just wanted to say I can't blame you for not wanting to have sex with uh, uh. with Pinocchio over there. His nose looks like a ram's horn. It's because you want him. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know you would have sex with me. <laughs> I, I would. Listen, last thing. Quick one. Um... You know I pay my debts. Hundred bucks that we have a Subway series. Who cares? Nobody cares about betting. Get out of here. I'm talking to an, uh, an actress. Get oh, out of here. Oh. Stupid. <laughs> Very dopey. Who is that? Our <laughs> own personal nemesis. That's yeah, that's... <laughs> well, it, it, I won't even go into it. All right. Tracy, uh, good luck with your show, First Wave. Thanks for talking to you us. No, I really do love you now. You do? Right? Yeah. Oh, so you admit ah. that you would make love to me over Rush Limbaugh. <laughs> yes, you know Gee, what? Well, I would. Now, there's a beauty pageant I want to win. With that. Yeah. <laughs> Rush Limbaugh. You know, I saw Rush Limbaugh on TV the other night yeah. on the O'Reilly Report mm-hmm. and uh, on Fox. I love that uh, Fox News channel. I'd I watch know. it. You watch it a lot. I watch it a lot. Because uh, you know what they do 24 hours a day? They just talk about, who, about politics. who's going to win the presidential election. Yeah. I could listen to people. I don't want to know who's going to win. I just want to hear people argue. You like the race. I like the race. <laughs> I love a horse race. And I love this. So I'm watching and they bring out that idiot Rush Limbaugh. The guy must have lost 100 pounds and he yeah. still looks fat. That big dope. He looks like a big fat pumpkin head. It looks like if you cut it to he his head, custard would come guy. out. He's a fat guy, no matter how thin no he gets. No matter what happens, he's a fat guy. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, I guess I got to. I got a break. Okay. Um, Tracy, great seeing you. Great meeting Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks for coming in, and uh, we'll watch the Sci-Fi Network, and uh, we'll be back right after these words. See, I told you he was a nice man. Yeah, he was. Howard Stern rocks. So are you, are you at least glad that Howard was very, very nice to you? Oh, Howard was wonderful. You were a little worried there for a little while. No. Um, more than anything, this morning when I got here, I was tired. So it's a, it's this, I, they, I think that they do that a lot in um, television and radio. You have these really early call times, so people are sort of half conscious. But I, I knew that he was going to be really, really smart. It was really nice that he was as sweet as he was. Oh, that's good. See you in a good time. Oh, yeah, definitely. I look forward to coming back. Oh, well, thanks. I hope he asks. 